All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Today is uh, Monday, March 26th, and um, this is my yearly, once a year, uh, Basel World uh, coverage. I started it a couple years ago with Kevin Christie, who unfortunately can't be here because he is in uh, Vancouver, which is very cool, working and making some money on uh, some TV show, so that's great. But about a few years ago, I met my other partner on this podcast, Bo Gorey, who is the master at Los Angeles Watchworks and a, uh, a king of restoration of vintage Rolexes and other watches, and also uh, a, a fucking master at uh, watches. How are you, buddy? Doing well, brother. How are you? I'm good, man. Just good. got back from New York City. Nice. And, uh, you know, uh, New York, a big watch town, of course. Of course. Uh, it's funny to be, uh, be on subways and stuff and see what people are wearing. Yep. I spotted one of the best fake Rolexes <laughs> I've seen in a long time up in um, uh, Nyack. I was going to Nyack. I was Nyack checking Falls, into... Right? Uh, no, Nyack is uh, like about an hour outside of New York. Okay. That was Buffalo. Buffalo. I was up there, but this was a few days ago with Joey Diaz. I was in Nyack doing Nyack Levity Live, checking into the hotel. I looked down... And I see a guy uh, wearing a Rolex. I go, oh, let's see what he's got there. And he's taking a while to check me in so I can really get a good look at it. And as I'm looking at it, it's a combo of three Rolexes. <laughs> <laughs> Which right away I wanted to say to him, like, I didn't know they made that model. Right. But, you know, I've had him rock it. You know, I'm, a, I'm not that kind of dick. You know what I mean? But it's always interesting a person that wears a fake watch. I'd rather wear no watch than a fake watch. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would hate to get robbed for a $2 Rolex and, um, you know, it's not even real and you end up getting shanked or something for something. Well, and a lot of brands, I mean, you, you don't have to wear a fake watch. I mean, there's plenty of good, solid brands out there that make great wristwatches for three, four, five hundred bucks, you oh know, which God. is, especially for the higher end fakes, the, you know, the shit you would get in NYC. I mean, you know, they're a couple hundred bucks for those things. So, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of people always say to me, I would never spend that much on a watch. You're out of your fucking yeah. mind. Uh, to me, it's never a status thing. And I think a lot of people where they get fake, you know, Louis Vuitton bags or whatever in their life. Uh, to me, a watch is uh, something, uh, a Rolex at least, is something that I've strived to. And then when you get it, you're like, I got I got to a, a goal in my life, right. you know what I mean? And it was never about, like I said, status. It was always something that was well-made, handmade, and I knew it was going to be incredible. And also, I loved James Bond, like right. I've always said. You like know all of I mean? us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah James I mean, Bond, Paul Newman, Steve right. McQueen. All the icons. Yeah. You know, I, most, most men, you know, aren't super flashy. You know, we, you know, we don't wear snakeskin shoes or carry fancy handbags. So when you've made a little bit of money and done something in your life, I mean, you buy yourself a nice wristwatch. And, you know, like you said, it's, it's a good investment as well. You know, you don't, it's not like a car where you lose 25% when you drive off the lot. You know? Yeah, yeah, you're right. So I'm looking down at this guy's wrist and he's, uh, it, it's basically, <laughs> I can see it's a, su uh, a sub, of course. I, I know the watch right away. But then I look and I go, oh, no, this is more of a, uh, a, a sea dweller because it's a little thicker. And then as I start looking, I go, actually, I think it's a deep sea. So as I start looking at it, it's a combo deep sea. But then it's got about a late 60s, early 70s markers, you know, like the faded shock uh, markers like, like nipple markers like on a GMT the small ones or no no the the actual all the markers were just like the white spots the uh, oh, okay like a non bezeled right right okay okay right right so I'm looking at, I'm looking at it and then and then I look at the winder and the winder is about an inch off the butt like a gap you know off the body. Like, 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 you know, like if you had the winder out. Oh, so like his crown was unscrewed? Yeah, but it or wasn't. What, it was screwed. It, it was, was just screwed. offset. <laughs> it had that much gap in oh, it. Boy. You know what I mean? And uh, and then no release valve on the side for, of course, how thick that watch is. And just mix it was, and match. It was just a, a, a like a, a garbage can. I yeah. wanted to go, hey, you got box and papers for that? God, I've seen horrible <laughs> ones. I like co-branded. It says GMT Ansa Mariner, and then it's got a Yacht Master bezel. Just to, <laughs> I've seen all manner of pain. I've seen, though, I've seen some fucking uh, uh, fakes 
that were so real that I've, I think I've told you before that made me never want to buy in yeah. the gray market. I just had an experience recently, one of the best I've ever seen, and it was frightening, honestly. It was, uh, so Yachtmaster 2, Blue Dial, one of the later models. Uh -huh. um, real movement. Whoa. Real dial, real hands. Uh, tube and crown assembly were real. Mid case was fake. Bracelet was fake. Bezel was completely fake. And I mean, it was... So what do you think the guy just had a movement around and then bought like a f everything? Ch else? Chances are it came out of the Eastern Bloc. Um, China used to be the spot where all the higher end fakes came out of, but now um, you know. But it, it had real movement. It had a real movement. It, but it was you know it was an older thirty one thirty five movement. Oh, it wasn't even the proper movement. No, but it was a movement. no. But it was a genuine Rolex movement. It, wow. it was frightening. And yeah. what did you say to the guy? Um, well, it, it, it was a, it was a, it was a dealer had bought it from a private. So, you know, I'm sure he returned it to him, you know, it, it came to us for authentication and, you know, just standard, you know, to get retail ready, just check it out. Gaskets. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah, like yeah. to do a little maintenance before he's going to put it up for sale. Yeah. We do a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. No, when you're looking at it, are you like, at first you just like, you open it up, you go, oh yeah, you were all good. And then what triggers you first? It's the wrong movement. It's real, but it's the wrong era. Um, the bracelet. Um, some aspects of the bracelet and I mean, correct markings, all the correct hallmarks were there, but, um, just something didn't feel right. I mean, when you've looked at, you know, 50,000 watches, you know, you, yeah. you, you feel things. So something felt a little bit off on the bracelet. So we dug a little deeper, took the bezel off and you know, that bezel should be solid platinum. Oh yeah, and that's right. That's it right. It was, um, you know, it, the bezel was clearly steel. It had a bunch of recesses cut out of it. Um, and just, wow. The click system looked pretty close. It was pretty convincing. Pretty convincing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's right. And uh, so you told him, hey, hey, we got some bad news. It's fake. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Good thing you didn't do the work first. Yeah. Right? Start yeah. just tool tooling up on it. You're like, yeah. wait a minute. Something's weird. But you're all right, though. Like, um, I think one of the key things I was reading um, when you want to know if it's a fake right away, uh, you wouldn't know this if you're a first time Rolex buyer, but. Of course, you know, everybody goes, oh, the sweep hand. It's got, but they, the fakes have long had the sweep hand. Yeah. I'm here to tell you guys. Uh, but one of the things that I did read, and I do notice on real Rolexes, is, is they're kind of hard to wind. The movement is stiff. Uh, on and, real or fake? Uh, on real. And on fake, it's just like, zzz, you know what I mean? The, the, the real ones seem to have a, a like a, a, a fucking depth to it, you know? Yeah. Do you yeah. notice that? Well, they I mean, should wind a little bit smoother. Right, the, right. Uh, you know, the fake ones are normally just like Miyota or, you know, whatever. They're automatic movements. That's why they still track. Right. Uh, instead of tick like a quartz. But Rolex should be... I guess there is a little bit more resistance, but it should be very, very smooth. So uh, you brought in a, an interesting watch today, which is really fucking cool. I what did. Is that? So this is kind of, this is a one of one. Is that yours? Yeah, this is wow. a, a one of one. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's the new uh, 114060. Uh -huh. uh, ceramic no date sub, oh, wow. but this is, I guess, well, kind of my modern interpretation of the big crown, you know, the bond watch that we all love the six, five, three, eight. Oh, did you make this or something? Yeah. So Whoa. that is, you know, uh, and it's got faded markers and shit. Right. Let's so, talk about this. So based on a, on a new, you know, ceramic no date, uh -huh. um, and the case completely reprofiled, obviously you see the crown guards are gone. Yeah. Milled the crown guards off and then retapped and mounted a new old stock eight millimeter brevet crown and tube the same one, you know, that's off the original 6538 or 5510. Where'd you get that? Just the yeah. parts? New old stock parts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rolex, um, up until recently, still supplies them as service parts for 5510s and 6538s. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. And then from there... Now, you cut the you cut the um, the uh, crown guards yeah. off, and now I can't tell at all. But oh, you, yeah. This is unbelievable. Thanks, bro. I gotta have this. <laughs> now, so... Uh, now, okay, then let's talk about it. It's so, a no-date sub with no crown, and then right. you've done faded. Now, you've got mixed era here, though. Yes. So if I did see you at the hotel uh, checking me in, I'd be like, that's a fake. Well, <laughs> But I do love this. I mean, it was built with a purpose. I mean, you right. see a lot of a lot of companies out there, and you know, this is not something that by any means is going to be like production or we're going to be offering, even yeah. as a modification. You know, this right. is something completely different. But so uh, crown roads removed. Um, Case slightly thin, wide vintage chamfers cut, and then from there, uh, the dial and hands. The the dial's been completely disassembled, all the indices removed, and the you know the old BGW nine uh, 
luminous removed and then refilled with super luminova with you know the vin nice vintage rich tone you see there so you you get the face right you remove all, all the indices all, all that stuff on the on the and this is a, a watch from the last five years yep yep and you remove that stuff that would be the blue glow right now right and then you put now do you take the um white gold um uh, marker edges are out yeah. too. Yeah. So the holy old, shit on on the older watches, '90s and into the uh -huh. 2000s, uh, the way those dials were made, it was just framed. So the white gold frames would post onto the dial, and then it would be filled with luminous. But how do they stick on there? Like glue, or is it uh, riveted? No, there's two posts in the back. Oh, wow. That so it indexes in the right location. Right. But on the new ones, they're more like a capsule. So they have a. Um, you know, it's um, it's a single unit. So the bottom is filled in. So all those are removed and then pull all the loom out and then remount them on the dial and then load them with the new loom. What? And then same thing on the hands. Now, is the loom um, hand applied like painted on or? It is. And does that uh, glow at still, all? Yep, still glows. It yeah. does? Absolutely, yeah. It and what color is it? The old uh, green? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, how long did this take you to do this watch? Start to finish with casework, machining, dial, and everything. A um, couple weeks. This now, what about? Can I get this myself? We might build one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. This is it's fun, right? Fucking so rad. The whole idea behind that was, I mean, everybody loves the Bond watch. Everybody okay. loves the history. Yeah. But um, and you know, people make homages out there, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, like let's talk about like um, Bamford. Bamford right. is very popular. Um, I, I used to be really in love with the Bamford, and then I burned down on it. Like you know, <clears throat> Tempest Excuse Machina me. makes a great one, and yeah. and I love that watch. I think they did a great job with not only that, but the Bamford did the big crown right yeah. with the red thing, yeah. And, and the they other sold out in like a minute, right? And the other offerings, uh, Project X makes a nice one, but the idea behind this was, um, you know, just just subtle cues. You know, it's still a fully functional dive watch in terms of function and water resistance. But, you know, a nod to the history that we're all in love with, you know? I mean, the most impressive part to me, dude, is this is a fucking dream watch, man. But you could wear it right now and not be worried about wearing a $100,000 watch. Like, right. what, what's a big crown go for now? I can't remember. I mean, <clears> anything <throat> that's all original is yeah. definitely in the six figures. Six figures. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. And, right. and keep in mind, that's a watch that retailed for about 180 bucks. Right. In the 50s. Now, when I was at your place recently, you showed me that one that was worth a zillion dollars. It was the military spec one. Yep. And it was like mint. 5517. Yeah. yeah. And that thing was like mint. Yeah, that watch is crazy. What, what was I've, that worth I've again? Worked, I've worked on quite a few of them. Um, it was insured when it was shipped to us for one seventy five. One seventy five, yeah, yeah. dude. Delivered by delivered and and returned by Brinks. That's what you said, Brinks yeah. truck, right? Yeah. Wow. It, this I think is like exactly exactly why it became obsessed with Rolex. This exact model sitting on Sean Connery's wrist. Yep. And, you know, you looked and it was the big crown. And I mean, that's actually the uh, the same uh, tricolor Phoenix NATO uh -huh. uh, that, that, he, that yeah, he wore. Yeah, made by the same company. <laughs> His was undersized. You know, it was uh, it was like a 16 millimeter strap on 20 millimeter lugs. Oh, yeah. So it looked hoopty. There's a well, there's a lot of speculation, that, you know, the of, of why it was. And you see a lot of guys, collectors wearing original big crowns on an undersized strap just for, you know, the yeah, look and the, yeah. and the feel of it. But yeah, yeah that's a that's a 20 millimeter NATO. But it is. Is, you know the original phoenix tricolor wow yeah throw it on i gotta throw it on man it's uh I, it's uh been a long time i think since i've been blown away by something cool um i mean other than what rolex has put out in the last five years but uh this is just fucking knocking me out I mean, it has everything I love. I love these. Now, what are these markers going to look like later? Are they going to fade? Uh, well, they're super luminova. Right. So, I mean, it, as far as color change or, you know, 
patina as people like to call it, it yeah. we shouldn't really see any change because it's modern material. It's it doesn't have a radioactive half life. So wow, man, wow, this is ah, oh, this is and and the way it feels. Yeah, it's a fun watch. Yeah, man, it really is. Wow, this is just fucking. I can't believe this has made my day, man. I think it looks I, better on you. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's coming home with me. Oh my god, I. I got to actually have this, man. This just blows my mind. Because when you said I'm going to bring something cool over, I just figured it was going to be... Something vintage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is... Generally, that's what's on my wrist. See, this is the kind of shit I love. Because, look, I love vintage stuff. I love vintage guitars. um, And I love, um, you know, vintage watches. And I love vintage Porsches and all that stuff. But I'm always worried that someone's going to hit it or a fire. Or you're going to hit it. I'm yeah, going to hit never it, know. whatever, and ruin it. And with this, this would be my Bond watch. And, you know, it's like, it's the love, it's, it's like I always wondered why Harley Davidson doesn't mind their past. Rolex is starting to do it. Of Finally. course, Tudor is right. definitely doing it. Um, and they're fucking wise because it's what the people want. Right. But Rolex, or uh, sorry, Harley Davidson had made the 1936 Knucklehead, which is considered the greatest car, uh, motorcycle ever. Which, by the way, the reason I said car was I just read that Porsche is going to make the 250, or not Porsche, Ferrari, is going to make the 250, like 10 of them. Really? They found all these old parts, and then they've, uh, and I guess that Jaguar has been doing this too, like for real, real ballers. They make a brand new old Ferrari. Really? Yeah, with like tooled machine stuff that they've got. And I don't know, they're probably like five, you know, five million bucks or oh, something. Yeah. You gotta be. But you got a brand new one right. that if someone hits you, you're like, well, it's not the vintage one that's sure. like a hundred million, you know? Um, so that's an interesting concept. I, I believe in it. I, I believe so too, because I think there's some people that go like, Oh, I don't know about that. But still, if I could get a brand new 1936 Harley Davidson knucklehead right now, I would do it. Yeah. You know I mean, you I mean? look what singer's doing. A singer is the perfect example. They're taking a, a nine, six, four, and they're giving you a car that, uh, is so modern right now. Um, and fast and crazy oh, yeah. and a thousand times better than um, anything that uh, anybody's doing out yeah. there. For know? the most part, turnkey reliability and oh. handling and yeah. comfort. Yeah, those things are amazing. Yeah, next level shit, man. So, you know, um, I'm pretty surprised on all that. Let's get into some of these releases. Now, Basel World, if you don't know what it is, it's once a year in March. Uh, they go and all the big, big watch uh, makers, except for pa- Panerai, I guess. They do theirs during another time. Yeah, yeah, we didn't see offerings from them. No, they do it at, at another time in the year, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, they all meet up and they release their watches, and it's totally top secret. And for uh, six months, nerds on Instagram will make watches. Speculating, with, Photoshop. With Photoshop yeah. and stuff, and they'll be like, this is what's coming out. This is it. And they do do some stuff. Um, these people make Photoshop stuff that I'm like, oh, God. I, yeah, I, I hope we, they do. Yeah, yeah right? Uh, and, of course, um, last year they did, Rolex did the 50-year uh, anniversary of the Sea Dweller. Right. And Rolex has definitely been mining their past, and I think that Tudor is uh, is kind of their little bit of uh, let's see what happens. Right. They put some stuff out. It sells like crazy. Then Rolex develops something. So, of course, the one of the most famous um, releases they did re- uh, in the last few years was the Daytona, and people went crazy over it with the uh, Panda and right. the ceramic. Uh, so people have been all wanting stuff. They all come at you. Um, but they did this year. They did something that I think is one of the best watches they've done in maybe 50 years. Yeah, I agree. You know, and it's the GMT Pepsi with the with the um, <clears throat> Jubilee band. 
And I can't even tell you how much I want this watch. Yeah, I think everybody's going to. <laughs> no. Now, there's only one thing that I was a little disappointed on this was the latch. They didn't go with that standard Jubilee. The secret. hidden clasp. Yeah, I love yeah. that. That's what I love about the Jubilee band. Well, I think the reason being is it's, you know, the, the GMT is, you know, one of their professional line. Yeah. So you get a lot more security out of the flip lock class Absolutely. as opposed to just the jubilee where you can knock it off pretty easy so that's at least i get it it's yeah. better in the long run so it doesn't pop off right there's a comfort level i tell people to the jubilee band that i can't even describe when you wear this band and if you don't know what a jubilee band is uh one uh rolex band would be kind of the solid links that you've seen on every right. most the of the traditional rolex. oyster right that's on subs gmt's daytona's yep. And this is more kind of what I always call the grandpa band. Right. You know, it's something like your dad got, your grandpa got for retirement. It's got that kind of comfort look. Oh, yeah. Kind of adheres to your wrist. The five link Jubilee is, like, like you said, it's super comfortable. It's super comfortable. Once you wear a Jubilee band, it's tough to go back. You know what I yeah, mean? It's, especially the new solid in link variant. It's, uh, you know, because that, that was always the problem with the Jubilee is they were, uh, had a bit of a lightweight to them. Where, right. where this solid one, I mean, it's, you know, you, as you want a sport watch, you, you want to feel it on your wrist. So, yeah. Do you I, think this band is similar to that one that we were going to put on the Batman? Uh, or is it a new design? I don't see why it wouldn't be. I mean, I, I doubt they departed and went to a completely new design for the Jubilee. So I assume um, the only thing that's going to be different is the, the clasp, the, the, the clasp as well as the lugins are going to be elongated a little bit to fit the, the mid case of the GMT a little better. But yeah, it should be the same design. So if you look at now, they've said they've, uh, which also they've upped the movement. It's right. got the new movement in it. And uh, the great thing about this movement is it's it's gone up to seventy uh, hour power reserve, right? Without winding or right. anything. That's well, a hell of a power reserve out of a, a single barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so, very much so. And they had to go to seventy because Tudor has been knocking it out of the park with seventy now for two years or right. three years with their own movement. So it's like, come on, man. Yeah. Uh, the thing that really blows me away is this watch is not that much money. Now yeah. I'm gonna. Say Say this prize, and I don't want to hear an email of, or see an email of like, yeah, not that much money. Whatever your hobby is, I'm sure it costs money. Smoking cigarettes, golf. Starbucks coffee, golf, fucking golf. People spend oh my God. absurd amounts of money on golf. Yeah. <laughs> I shoot guns, man. I don't play golf. Yeah, at guns. Yeah. Uh, ammo. Yeah. Ammo's out the ass, you yep. know, lawsuits from the gun, you know, all that. <laughs> so, you know... Um, they uh this watch i believe is 9240 9240 dollars and i and if you can get it for that <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> oh my god now this is one thing that i talked to kevin christie about last night that really um I got I, I got to tell you, Rolex, I, I'm down for what they're doing, but I've also seen this mistake with Harley where they have all these items and they're making them hard to get now, which the like Harley would do a classic thing where they would release a new motorcycle and it would send butts through the doors, but the motorcycle wouldn't be there. And in their mind, they're like, well, they'll just buy a different motorcycle right. while they're there. That's not what happens anymore because people are so picky. It's not like, oh, I'm just here. I'm going to buy that. I'm out of here. Yeah. Now, what's going on is Rolex, of course, the Daytona stainless steel has always been hard to get. Right. A year, two year. Very waiting few list. allocations. Very hard to get. Unless you're a baller and you buy three, four watches, then they magically have one in the back that somebody didn't uh, pick up. Sure. Now... The problem is what Rolex is doing. Last year, they released the stainless steel Sky Dweller that uh, sent people crazy in the blue face and the black face and the white face. Everybody wants the blue face or yep. the black, and they're not out there. It's right. been one year, and I've yet to even see one in person, and I personally have a Rolex sponsor, St. Cross Jewelers, uh, and they have only gotten one, which, by the way, if you do want to get a Rolex, go to St. Cross Jewelers. This is uh, not an ad. These guys uh, are incredible. They're a authorized dealer in, um, in Koreatown of uh, Los Angeles. 
And it's a real Rolex dealer. So go there, tell them I sent you because these guys, it's not jive. There's not a bunch of people in there. There's not movie stars coming in and you're getting bounced like, you know, some of these other shops in LA where they don't look at you or anything. Anyway, my point is, I talk to the guy there all the time and he goes, haven't seen a sky dweller yet. Yeah. Have uh, Daytona's maybe two a year he's seen in there. Um, also a very, very hard watch to get is the the Sea Dweller in the red. Right. Now these are three of the releases that they put out in the last, I'm talking three years now, and they're still not in the store. So I don't know what they're, I understand to keep the value up right. and the, and the, and the, the, the lun- allure, the lure and yeah. the lunacy. But at some point, you've got to get some in the stores because then what happens is you drive people to other brands, which is Tudor, Omega, Panerai, Omega. Now, Omega is really, uh, Omega is what I call the Ducati of watches because Ducati was just this fucking little niche. Little Italian brand. Little yep. thing sitting there, and Harley was this behemoth. Same with BMW. They had their weird little worlds of Ducati and Beamer. But Ducati and Beamer kept making stuff. And, and as Harley didn't have shit, people were like, I'm going to try this other stuff. And that stuff started getting better and better. And all of a sudden, Ducati and BMW are, are way the hell up right. there. And right. almost... Uh, uh, more popular than Harley now, you know? So uh, what I'm saying is this Rolex that came out, this Pepsi is, uh, is going to be hard to get. Yep. And it's, it's, it's so funny because if you look at the forums, people immediately go, I'm on the list. I'm number 80. And it's just like, (laughs) this is stupid. Rolex has famously done that. I mean, you look, you know, at the Daytona models, like, think about how hard it was to get when they released a new ceramic model. You Impossible know? still. Yeah. My, I mean, bu- my buddy, Phil Hanley, a uh, great comedian in New York. He's like, he's just seems like he's out of gas all the time when I see him. Cause he's like, oh, this is just never going to happen, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on the list. It's been two years yeah. now. I mean, you, know? you can go to the secondary market and pay a premium, yeah, which you is can what, pay fi- what most grand. people end up doing. Yeah. That's what most people do. I get it. Now look, if you really need something and you want to get it, make sure it's a secondary market from a guy who's well trusted and everything. Right. Most of the, if you're going to buy a brand new gray market watch, yeah, buy the seller, buy yeah, buy the seller. Like you said, look at the seller's ratings, ask people, everything, uh, go to Bo and have them look at the watch. You know, he can tell right away. Oh, this is fake or whatever. Right. It, because man, I, there's, I cannot sleep at night unless I buy it at a dealer. That's why I wait so long because I'm like, all right, I got I, I know I walked out of the dealer with sure. this watch. But I mean, there's a lot of trusted resellers there out there, there you is. know, there is. Uh, so anyway, how do you like this watch? Uh, I like it a lot. I think that I really think they hit it out of the park with this one. They, they slightly redesigned the case, which I like. They, they thinned because you know, all the new ceramic models. I mean, you look at this obviously before I worked on it. Yeah. Really, really thick, kind of thick body. You mean? Yeah. Thick, short lugs. Uh, this as well as the sea dweller, we're seeing a little bit thinner lugs, a little longer. Uh, I think that's the right direction. To sit on your wrist better. Yeah. Because some of those um, earlier ones, they sat up like a hamburger. Yep. And they're very uncomfortable to wear. They just sit on the two bones of your uh, wrist weird. Yeah. And uh, that's why everybody loved the Daytona, the way that it sits on your wrist, you know. So... Do you now? One thing I don't like about Rolex's releases is I don't. I have so many questions. Do you think that the redesigned body is going to go across the GMT line? We never know. I know. Like, uh, are the because you know the GMT still making Batman, right? So is Batman going to have the new body? Yeah. Or are they using the old body still? And this only has the new body till the old bodies uh, where um, uh, run out. That's, that's a good question. That's how yeah. Rolex usually well, rolls it. Uh, Look at that third. 3186 movement against the 3185. Remember, right. like there was that time people went crazy. People yeah. went crazy. Like I've got the old watch with the new movement, and that thing makes it yeah. worth so much money. Yeah, I mean those, those GMTs are insane. I mean, you're seeing them in the secondary market with you know with the original movement for 14, 15 grand. Yeah. You know, sometimes higher for NOS pieces. It's it's out of this it's world. It's crazy yeah. if it's an error dial Coke yep. with the 3186 movement. Yeah, it's crazy money. 
even though no one can even see it, right. you know what I mean? The movement's in there, but it's a rare watch. Exactly. You know? yeah. um, so that's going to be an interesting question. Will this body carry over across the GMT line? Because uh, not that it matters to me, because this is the only one that I will own. <laughs> I look at this and go, I will yep. own that somehow. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, and then some of the other Rolex, uh, Rolex uh, releases. Deep Sea redesign. They redesigned the Deep Sea. Now, you and I have talked about this before. Uh, I love the Deep Sea when it came out. Sold everything I had and bought it. Sold right. it in two weeks. Yep. It was the worst fitting watch of all time, and it just had no, uh, no comfort, and no, it, it was cool in all the ways. It's a beefy ass watch it was uh designed to go deeper than any watch ever on the planet james cameron uh of course yep. took it down into a sub on that documentary to the deepest depths of the the ocean and but the thing was the strap was always too the uh the bracelet the bracelet was too thin too narrow yeah too narrow for the girth of that watch yeah, very a, big heavy watch giant watch right and then it would sit off to the side so they uh redid the lugs and they redid the, the bracelet uh, i'm excited about that so on the bracelet i haven't dug too deep did they did they not do a tapered bracelet is the, it is it continuing at 20 all the way to the class well that's what i'm hoping but they said they've widened the center links broader okay. bracelet and redesign oyster lock let's see if we can get a see a picture of it real quick see it looks like it stays that was the problem it got thin at the bottom yeah taper, of, taper down to 18 uh, there. yeah and it was just horrible the body definitely looks way better uh, it's got the glide lock which i absolutely love you know there's nothing cooler than the glide lock uh during the day uh, we don't see the back of the the clasp. It does look wider here, but we can't really tell. But they said that they've, and now I really believe that they fixed that because, um, you know, I was reading it said wider center links, which is interesting, right? Um, but oh, stay tuned on that, people, because this watch will be around. It's not. It's not. A super popular watch. It's definitely for watch nerds. I love this uh, one with the green riding, you know. But uh, the Deep Sea, uh, they've updated the body and the movement. Yeah, the new 2235 caliber. Right. Or 3235, rather. Now, um, and then they've updated the band, which is really cool. Now, and, and uh, you know, this watch is fucking beefy. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. It's a, it's a what an absurd death rating. It's definitely one of those watches that like Stallone and uh, Stallone style wearing, you know, Stallone and, uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Maybe the next Expendables they'll all be wearing that. Yeah. Like the Panerai. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then of course, Rolex put out, oh, they've continued with the ugly line. These uh, weird... come on, this thing, dude. You don't like the Rainbow Daytona? Oh, oh you're killing me. I mean, it's not a daily wear, but you like that? Yeah, yeah, That's I cool. like it. I like it. I'm still a fan of the old Cheetah one. Yeah, I love the Cheetah one. I remember seeing Steven Tyler wearing the Cheetah Daytona. It was a Daytona with a Cheetah band yep. and shit. Yep. It was straight for old grannies in Beverly Hills. I love that watch. Yeah, our uh, our buddy up in San Francisco famously wears one all the time. Oh yeah, who? Yeah. Yasik. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's always wearing one. It's so yeah. great. Oh, my God. I love that he has that. Uh, and then they did a 36, which is great for women. Uh, a 36 day chest. Do you like this one? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Girls are wearing bigger watches. My, you know, my, my wife wears a 1500 most of the time. So, yeah. I mean, I love I, I love uh, women that wear GMTs. And uh, like I said, I saw Cameron Diaz. I like a chicken a sub. Yeah, for oh, sure. Oh, man. It's so cool. You know, I shouldn't have said that. Now my wife's going to bug me. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be like, where's my sub? <laughs> yeah. Now, what happens with um, Rolex? is okay we see this right i was like oh okay cool had no idea but when you click on gmt now uh what what be, the way before you could get a pepsi dial the only way you could get it a pepsi bezel was the white gold version right which and, they changed also which they changed they they did this year to a blue face right kind of weird i, I wasn't a fan of it yeah 
Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, the white gold people are all burned now. No, the white gold watch is badass. I yeah. just never buy white gold because right. it looks stainless steel. Right. You know what I mean? Now, this is interesting. This watch, I think, is fantastic. I call it the Count Chocula. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I, I, fuck root beer. To me, it's the Count Chocula. Yeah. And they did a GMT in rose gold with the uh, black and uh, root beer kind of colored bezel. Right. I, I'm loving this. I like this. it. Yeah, oh I like it. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, it's got a good look. And if you read a lot of the Instagram posts, people say that this watch in person is mind-boggling. Right, yeah. Which I'm pretty excited to see in person. And this will be easier to get because it's only... Uh, it's only going to be thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, so no big deal. <laughs> How many people are going to get that? You know, but this one, but this here in the two tone is great. Right. But I mean, if you're really going to get it, it's got to be this. Yeah. This and, is, and they, they, I'm glad they did it in the in the Ever Rose. It, yeah. It's, it's a good metal. What is Ever Rose? So the 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 deal with Ever Rose is it's uh, you know Rolex has their own foundry, so right. they make all their own metals in house, blend all their own alloys. Uh, generally in time since past rose gold always ends up going yellow. Right. So anytime you have a different color gold, it's just more or less of any given alloy for rose. We see copper alloy added. So Rolexes came up with a blend that they call ever rose, which never goes yellow. Wow. So it always stays that good, rich rose color instead of like normal rose gold that yellows after, after being worn a while. And then, you know, once you, once you polish your wipe it down with a cape clod, it'll be, it'll be uh, rose again, but Rolex has ever rose stays rose. It's unbelievable. This watch. Yeah, man. it's cool. I like it. it. It looks really cool. And I can't really, I guess this is uh the GMT writing is kind of a root beer Brown. Yeah. Yep. Something, which is, which I'm, I'm I like that. I love yeah, it. That's a good little accent. Yeah. I love it. Uh, now they still are making the GMT anniversary with the green hand right. stainless, which I was pretty surprised. Yeah. And they're still making Batman. People thought Batman was going to get discontinued. Get out. Yep. And I'll tell you what, there's something about the Batman to me that just didn't feel like, um, old Rolex. Just kind of a departure from yeah. what we love. I really loved it at first, but I was like, this, this is kind of, uh, I don't know. To me, it was, it just didn't seem Rolex. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, compared to this Pepsi. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? they knocked it out of the park. Holy with this. shit, man, this thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, Rolex, hats off to you for just really, really not sitting on your ass. And, uh, and they brought and, some stuff we wanted this year. Uh, yeah. And, la and la uh, uh, now, one interesting thing, though which has really blew my mind and they must be working a little longer on it but everyone thought for sure a 50 year anniversary sub right it's 50 years and no well, no it's already been 50 years right but i mean they never did it you know what i mean like that's that's pretty interesting you know i, mean, I we, guess because they did it with the sea dweller yeah yeah i mean they they did the 50th anniversary sub back you know what was it 2000 2003 right with the green yeah with the green, and, then, the and then they did the hulk which some people yeah. love, some people yeah. hate. Um, no new sub offerings this year. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting. Do they still make this uh, Hulk? I think they do. I believe so. I, I never looked. I believe yeah. so. But uh, you think they'll ever um, do something like what you just did right here? A I full tribute? I don't know. I mean, we they're kind of doing the same thing they used to do back in the fifties and sixties where Tudor was more of a test bed, right? You know, like the, uh, you know, the Tudor big crown was before the six, five, three, eight. And a lot of the models back in the fifties and sixties, you would see them released at, under the Tudor brand before a full rollout under the, the Rolex name. So, I mean, we can hope so, you wow. know, cause we see what Tudor's doing with, with the black Bay and all the variants of the black Bay and everything yeah. else. So, Hopefully, you know, we do see some of the more vintage inspired stuff from Rolex. Right, right. Let's get into uh, Tudor. Let's go to yes. their releases because, of course, I've been a big fan of Tudor. And if you saw me on Love this season, right. I was wearing Isn't the it? Tudor yeah, hat. I saw the hat. I, I, got, I got that through, <laughs> man. I was like, and then I was like, where's my watch, guys? Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? You know, now Tudor, they don't need Delray anymore. They got like, uh, what's his name? The soccer dude. Yep. And uh, they got like serious stars, you know, this guy here, uh, Jay Chow, um, they got all these He's like a, what is he? He's like a, he's, a, he's an actor from where? I don't know where he's from. Korea, if I'm not, but, I could be completely off. I don't know. But he must be a huge star yeah, to be yeah, on yeah. the front page, you sure. know? 
Uh, now let's get into it a little bit. This watch right here, Tudor released a, a, a few watches and a lot of people do not like 40 millimeter. They don't like 41. They don't like 44. They've got a small wrist. They always say the same thing. I wish I could wear a right. sub, but it's always too big for me. Um, I never believe in that. I don't think uh, Kevin Christie says that a lot. Like, ah, it just seems too big. Yeah, because we're not big dudes. We're and, not big dudes. Yeah. But I, I, I think that 40 is always, you know, like perfect. Should work for everybody. Right. Um, but here's your answer right here. Right. What Tudor did was they released a 39 millimeter. It's only one millimeter, or, or one millimeter smaller than Rolex, but three millimeters because theirs is 42. Right. Uh, smaller than their their Black Bay. So you've got a 39 millimeter Black Bay that is fucking smoking. It's got a gilt dial, rivet band, or you can get it in a cloth or a leather band. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about this was the gold on the uh, markers, no. on the uh, bezel markers. I wish it was regular, uh, but then it would just look like their other Black Bay. Right. But how do you like this watch? Uh, I like it. Uh, I, I'm wondering what market it's aimed at. You know, is right. it is it for, um, you know, traditionally we see smaller stuff, uh, glasses, watches, kind of aimed at Asian markets. Mm -hmm. Or is it like, uh, you know, to try and bring uh, bring some of the girls into uh, the right. sp sport watch um, space. I don't know. Um, I know I have my favorite release in Tudor this year, but that's not it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now we'll get into their releases. Uh, one interesting thing about Tudor to me is, uh, they are kind of getting, there's, t it's, it's a little like Harley also where Harley will have like 19 soft tails. Yeah. Right? You got the, the fat boy, you got the slim dog, you got the <laughs> bratter dog, you know, there's so many black bays. Now I would like to see some of them discontinue. Yeah. They threw a lot at us. Yeah. Uh, now next up for Tudor was of course, this one. Is this your favorite here? Nope. No. So Tudor did a Pepsi 41 millimeter. Uh, GMT, which is interesting with the big crown and, uh, and a lot of people love this. I love the, uh, the GMT hand. It's yeah. the long one, like the old days, skinny long. Yep. And, uh, people are going crazy yep. over it's this. It's got the Pepsi, which everybody wants. Yeah. This one's going to be a hit, I think. Oh yeah. And yeah. now, now, the, now, and they're still using metal be aluminum bezels. So they fade like the, uh, you could get this and it. Yeah. Non-ceramic. Non-ceramic and it would fade and uh, get some patina, get yeah. knocked up, get some character. Yeah, absolutely. And uh 70 hour power reserve. Love the bracelet. The yeah. Throwback bracelet's awesome. 3,900. And finally a date, which I love. Yeah. Which uh, a lot of their black bays don't have dates, you know? And on the grand scheme of things, I mean, such a reasonable price point, in my opinion. That's oh. so much watch for the money. Oh, you know? my God. 3900 bucks. Yeah. And let me tell you, you could get right now a used Pelagos, which is an incredible watch. In for the about, twos. Yeah. For yep. about 2500 bucks. And I'll tell you what, that watch yeah. is phenomenal. Yep, I've I've torn them completely apart, and from a technician standpoint, they're they're amazing. A lot of thought went into building those watches. Wow, yeah. and seventy mil or seventy hour power reserves and in house movement, yep. great movement. Uh, yeah, bezel system's good. Uh, crown tube assembly's good. Great, great watch. No, no, I don't know much about this here. This is the they released kind of a dress watch. A Tudor, uh, what do they call this? The 1926. Yeah. yeah, so this was one of their original designs as well. So this oh, is wow. another throwback. Yeah, wow. So they they used to have something like this yep. back in the day? Yep. It's an interesting uh, dial. It has uh, numbers at every other. So uh, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Minimalist dial. Minimalist dial. Weird band. Not a fan of the band myself. It's uh, It's real similar to what you know it's represented in the old model it, oh, it's gotcha. a real similar bracelet 3400 bucks i'm not sure how much that will sell but maybe a lot of people uh that are, don't want a, a dive watch right is yeah. it rose the accents are rose or yellow uh, oh, let's i think see they're here. rose wow is it rose gold i think so let's look real quick uh, oh it's got diamonds oh yeah are you seeing that yep it's got diamonds on the other markers i didn't even notice that wow it's pretty cheap for what you're getting here you know, you think there's a cubic zirconian? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Markers are set with diamond. Man, that's that's uh, that's kind of baller. I didn't even notice that. <clears throat> that's kind of like a uh, a hip hop entry level. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, let's get into their next release. Tudor did a uh, a thirty two millimeter. Um, Black Bay 32. This is a, a, a weird watch. It's it's kind of a sport watch for a woman, I guess. It's a Black Bay yeah. with no bezel. Right. And um, it, you know, this is 32 millimeter, kind of a kind of a plain watch. You know, um, it looks a little bit like an Explorer One, but with dots. Right. I think I think that's you know essentially it's it's the Tudor Explorer One. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Over, over the Ranger? Didn't they do a watch? Uh, yeah, they did the yeah. Ranger as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, they're starting to flood the market a little bit with a lot of different models. Now, what one do you like? The S&G on the, uh, on the cloth bracelet, that last one. Wait, wait, right here? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about this. Now, oh, what? no, that's not it. That's not a black. No, that's not it? I don't, I don't even know if it was... I mean, it, oh, yeah, the, yeah, there it is. Let's see. Oh, I got you, because you can get different faces yeah. on this. So uh, let's talk about this watch. Let me look at it here. Uh, this face here. Yeah. What is this watch? So it's uh, it's steel and gold. Okay. I it, uh, the one I like is the champagne dialed variant. Wow. Let's see here if we can find that. And oh, this is the one Beckham's wearing. Yeah, and, and uh, it's forty one millimeter with steel case with polished satin links. Um, and then it has uh, the, a new movement in it. They've updated their movement this year, right? And uh, which is, you know, Tudor's just really killing it. But let me see if I can find this. There here. it is. Oh, that one there yeah, with the champagne dial. Wow, you like this, huh? Yep. On well, the on the on the NATO strap. On the NATO yeah. strap. Now that's just a black bay, but it's a two tone. They had, they had this last year, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, they did last year. I remember this. Let me look real quick here. Watches. Uh, oh, go. Here, there we go. I, I remember this from last year, right here. Actually, you remember this one? They released this last year. Yep. Yeah, this one. You like this? Huh? Yeah. Something about the champagne dial. I don't know what it is. Wow. Yeah, it does it for me. It's salty. Yep. <laughs> Everybody in the group has, has something they like that yep. no one else likes. Yep. You know what I mean? Like nobody likes the cheetah. Right. Uh, Daytona like me, you know. All right. Uh, hats off, Tudor. Let's get a little bit into. Um, okay. Now, uh, people always ask me what watch you love. I love the Rolex more than anything. But of course, if I was uh, next level balling, it would be Paddock, you know. Right. And. Something weird has happened um, in the last year. I don't know what it is. There's a, I, I've yet to find a uh, paddock, um, uh, like a, a guy that knows everything about them business-wise because nobody seems to know much about them. When you go into their shops, you go like, what's going on? Why isn't this here? But it seems like they stopped making watches about six months ago. Um, and all of a sudden, the Nautilus market the 5711, especially the blue face, right. went through the roof. This watch lists for 22.4, but it's used right now 40. Yeah. For a stainless steel watch. Right. Used for 40. Crazy. And it's going to be one of those watches, if you bought it used for 40 later on, like the Milgauss, when it came out with the green lens and you paid yep. 30 for it, now yep. you can get it for 6,500. Right. It's not going to drop like that, but... The, the the market if they ramp production back up yeah if they ramp production back up and then just the markup's only five grand you've lost like 20 grand in in a year right um i don't know what is going on because uh paddock most people hated them for years the nautilus model i'm saying not of course they're beautiful beautiful models but um they um they, you know, something happened and this watch caught fire. And I don't know what it is, but uh, they released a, a, a different version of the blue face right. at, at this. I looked at both blue faces. I couldn't really tell the difference. I would have to see both in the sunlight. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the 5711, I mean, can you believe what this watch is selling for? It's crazy. It really is, right? How, do you get them in at all? Not that often. Because I've never even been able to try one on. 
I don't even know what if, if if I would even like it if it fits good or anything. Yeah, no, it's a comfortable watch. It looks great. Right. Um, obviously, a lot of technology built into it. Um, you know, after all, after all, it's paddock. Right. Um, we've had we've had a couple in. Man, it's like I mean, I'm telling you, people, this watch sells for twenty two thousand four hundred. You're never going to be able to get it no. at that price. And the market is unbelievable on this watch. So what happened was then people were like, well, maybe I'll get an Aquanaut, which right. is a different kind of look on the same style watch. And that thing was about 18 grand. And somewhere along the line, since that watch couldn't be got, the Aquanaut went up about five, six grand. Right. And so now that watch is like 25, 28 grand. And, and they, they released an Aquanaut Chrono this year at Basel. Now, let me tell you the ridiculous on that. So I see <laughs> the Aquanaut Chrono and right. I go, oh my God, home run of the show. I need that. Orange band, yeah. orange hand. I like it. I was like, this is amazing. You know how much it is? 40 grand. Jesus. In steel. In steel. <laughs> Retail. That's crazy. 40 grand. That, so the regular one is 18.5. Yeah. You're telling me that for uh, for a chrono, it's going to be 20 grand more, 22 grand more? Double the price. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> and it's like, I don't even give a fuck about that function, you yeah. know? Unbelievable. So that watch is completely out of the market. And then they released a... Um, they did the Ellipse. Yeah, they did the Ellipse, which is, I mean, I, I, I just don't get this watch at all. Uh. Gentleman's watch. Yeah, yeah, just grandpa. Okay, this one right here has got to be the best watch I've ever seen. It's yeah, the 5270. 5270 chronograph perpetual calendar. Let's talk about what this dial does because I'm a little confused. Okay, you've got your standard time. You've got your date, Saturday, March 3rd. Here's the date down here. What is this here? Because so, it's 8, 10. What is that? 8, 10, 20. That's tw just the, uh, the, the chrono. That's the, uh, the minute counter for the chrono. Oh, so that would be the long minutes of the stop. Mm -hmm. So, so got, here's the seconds. We've got time, date, phase of the moon, uh -huh. um, you know, a mechanical stopwatch, which is a chronograph feature. Right. And then, you know, perpetual calendar. So day, date, month, year. Right. So here we got Mar uh, Saturday, March 3rd. And uh, what's this here? That what day? It, wait, what is that? This one through thirty. Wouldn't that be the date? Here, because here's a three here that I think's the date. I don't know what the fuck that is. Year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, year. Wait, year? It's gotta be. What year it is? Wait, no, because we got one, two, two, three, yeah. four, five. Yeah, that's for for 2021. Oh. Yeah, so see how it's set at 18? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this is what, night here, this blue thing? Yep. And then this shows you night. So AM, PM indicator. Unbelievable, yeah. this fucking watch. And keep in mind, all mechanical. Uh -huh. All yeah. mechanical. Oops. Somebody makes this by hand. So much technology. You think it's one guy that makes this? Um, they've got a couple of master watchmakers that are reserved and literally have their own area inside paddock where, you know, there's, there's, um, you know, controlled entry. Nobody goes in there. Top secret. Right. They, they've got some crazy stuff going on in there. Look at that. I mean, dude. when it comes time to service that watch, good luck. Really? Oh yeah. It's going to be gone for a year. It's going to be five grand, probably more. Wow. Yeah. And gone yeah. for a year. Yeah. Cause I mean, there's only, you know, a couple watchmakers in the world that, you know, are even qualified to service that. Like, like now how many years you think you would go before you need to get it serviced? Um, I mean with, you know, the industry standard has always been five, uh, -huh. uh with all the new hairsprings and new lubricants. M most people are thinking 10. Yeah. So well, I'd probably be dead by then. <laughs> so I just worry. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be interesting. I'd be, in, I'd be interested to know what paddock recommends in terms of uh, right. service intervals on a piece like that. I'm a sucker for Sam and dial. Yeah. I think it's, it's uh, it's gotta be one of the best looking watches I've ever seen. Okay, so that one I love. And then where's that Nautilus they put out? Oh, here it is. This thing is so incredible. White gold. Uh, this is brand new uh, with like moon dial and everything. Yep, face I, of the moon. I don't even know what this would cost. 
Um, but look at this watch. Now, look at this is interesting, right? What is this 12, 18, 24, 6 in here? Oh, is that the year two? Uh, scroll, uh, scroll up to the... Uh... So uh, travel time, an annual calendar. Yep, second time zone chronograph, annual calendar. Oh, here's the... Uh, uh, oh, here's the price. 119000 <laughs> <laughs> 119,000. It's a nice sports car. Which, which back, by the way, let me see how much that salmon one was. 119,000, guys. Now, now when, when I talk about a watch like that, then you could go like, dude, it's fucking, who would pay that? The salmon one is 187,000. So that's basically a Ferrari 4 right, right there on your wrist. A Ferrari 4, a 911 uh, GT3. Wow. On your wrist right there. Yeah. A house in all of America. Yeah. Except for, uh, you know. Except for Southern California. Right. Or, or, <laughs> or, or Manhattan. Yeah. But uh, that's a great house in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, yeah. Right there. Yep. You're, you're the baller yeah. at 187000 Holy smokes. Okay. So, uh, anyway, um, we are nerding out here today on Basel World. And uh, like, like I said, many people... Uh, love this episode when we talk about watches. We'll run real quick through the um, Omegas. And and if you want to see all the releases, go to hodinky.com. Right. There's so many releases. There's oh, yeah. uh, a ton of stuff. I did want to talk one second. If you're into like cheap watches, let's talk about this Seiko real quick because I like to cover both markets. The Seiko is beautiful. It's a Seiko 1968 recreation. Yeah. Let's talk about that watch. So it's based on the 6159, which yep. was the... Their uh, their high beat diver, which was their their first real, you know, in depth dive into uh, professional dive watches. It's, uh, it's mono, beautiful mono block case, yeah. so it's a top loader. Uh, you know, the the mid case is sealed, so it has no case back. Um, I love it. Wow. Yeah. And and it's got the winder is down, so it doesn't grind into yeah. your wrist. Classic That's... four o'clock location for Seiko. Wow. Yes. Yeah, such and, a great uh, watch. And then uh, live, uh, automatic, right? Yep. Wow. Let's see what this costs. Is there a cost on this? It's beautiful, guys. 5400 bucks, man. Yeah, so definitely not cheap. Ooh, that's big for Seiko. Yeah. They're pa I mean, Seiko? Yeah. That's more than the uh, Tudor. And that's, I mean, some of the grand Seiko offerings they, yeah. they released this year, again, are, you know, by, by no means, uh, you know, affordable. Are these Swiss made? No. Everything Japanese. Everything Japanese, Everything Japanese at fifty four hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, people. A lot of people don't realize the Japanese were at the forefront of watchmaking for a long, long time. Right. You know, they had you know, in terms of quick set and you know, luminous material, they they were ahead of the Swiss brands back back in the day. It looks smoking cool, and a lot of people say, "Hey, what watch would you get?" I would almost get this over a Tudor. Because it's so unique. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're a and Seiko guy, used somewhere. Yeah, I mean, you know? if you're a Seiko guy, I am in terms of you know vintage Seiko dive watches. I have a ton in my own collection. I really, really love them. They've got a rich history. Um, what a lot of people love about this is they left the prospect mark off the dial, which is when they released the new turtle, it's got that big prospects X on it and it kind of makes the dial a little bit too busy. I'm glad they left it off on this. I mean, literally it looks almost identical to the original 6159. God, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, original, the, you know, the vintage inspired waffle strap, the dial, bezel, hands, everything is right on. I, I, I will definitely be getting one. Oh yeah? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Now where are we to get the, where does Seiko sold at like watch, uh, high end watch stores? Like, I, I mean, not high end. Yeah, but there's like, a lot of West Coast dealers. Right. Um, a lot of what they do is JDM market or uh -huh. so, you know, a lot of it's Japan release only. So it's a little bit more difficult to get, but yeah, there's plenty of West Coast based dealers and, you know, US based dealers. Only 1500 made. Yeah. Wow. Wow, man, it is such a cool, cool watch. And uh, what's the size on this? 44. Yeah. Wow, it's beefy. Yeah. That's a beefy watch. And it has the loom. Is it uh, glow? Oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's a torch. Oh, it's a torch. Yeah, that's, that's one thing Seiko's famous for. I mean, their loom is, is out of this world. But the back is very interesting. Oh, it's got a, like a helium valve? Uh, well, no. So what, what Seiko does is all of their saturation divers, uh -huh. the technology is built into the crystal gasket. Oh, so, so it kind of lifts up? Exactly right. Whoa. It's an L-shaped gasket. Yeah. So the, the it leaves enough room for the crystal to actually lift and release gas. Wow. Yeah. 
Wow, man. I, I actually fucking like this watch a it's lot. It's a great watch. Great watch. Man. I mean, I really like that a lot. Oh, you, uh, don't, you don't want that Hublot, Dean? No. <laughs> Hublot. I mean, still our all-time uh, least favorite is Hublot. Absolutely. And they just released more garbage. Oh, God. Uh, they, they released something that was just so... Uh, First take of the Hublot Big Bang. You, Red you, magic. Red <laughs> magic. It's such a piece of garbage, man. It's hilarious how... Uh, now, look, if you like Hublot, yeah. I'm not knocking you, but to me, it just looks too much like... Um, what are those car Transformer. Yeah. It looks like a Transformer. I mean, know? my big problem with it is there's... It's a really, really high price point and very little watchmaking technology. You know, it's they're basically just, just it's just an ETA movement. ETA movements. movements. Yeah. yeah, the non screw down crown on most models, um, and from you know from a guy who's taken apart quite a few of them. Yeah, they have a tendency. They have a pretty high failure rate, so a lot of screws strip out, and just in my opinion, they're just not made to last. Right, and they're know? pricey, they're man. Super pricey. Yeah. Let's see how much this one is here. Uh, let me look here. It doesn't seem to have the price, uh, unfortunately. But man, these watches go for money. Yeah, and it's just you know they just seem like toys to me. <clears throat> they're not happening. Okay, now Roll uh, Omega has been really fucking tearing it up in the last right. five, six years. I mean, they have just a lot of good designs. Yeah, a lot of good designs, and they brought back a watch that just is so classy to me, man. The forty-eight Seamaster, and also Omega is badass. Where they are all limited, man. Right. I mean, good luck. Like, you know that I still want that Snoopy one that came out oh, yeah. three years ago. The speedy. I was on the list for it. Something fucking happened. I ended up not being on the list, and those watches are double the money now. Yeah. Look at like, the Speedy Tuesday. I I wish I would have got one. Yeah. I mean, I can still get one, but right. Yeah. But uh, this Omega Seamaster um, is just beautiful. It looks like a classic, like old school watch, like your dad would wear or something, which is cool, man. All the original lines, like the case design, is is very much like the original. I love the uh, the sub dial instead oh. of the center seconds. The um, the dial indices are great. The arrow shape with the three six nine and twelve, I'm, yeah, I'm loving them. It's just beautiful, and they're never that crazy in money, you know. And it's just unbelievable how I mean this one, man. I love this yeah. one. It doesn't get any more. Just it's still powered by the coaxial movement. What is that movement? So it's um, instead of just having the single barrel, right? Um, and the, the, the escapement is, um, it's like a dual escapement essentially. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. It's beautiful, man. It is beautiful. Is it open back? Or, look at that. Oh, yeah. whoa. With the boat engra engraved on the yeah. case back. La laser etched into the sapphire. <laughs> Insane. This watch, man. What a great watch and uh, limited. They're only doing a few of those. Uh, what else did they put out? They put out... Uh, there, there was another new... This one. There we go. Yeah, I knew there was a new Speedy. Yeah, thing. this Moon Watch. Uh, it's it, the Apollo, the dark side of the moon. Yeah. It's probably my least favorite out of the uh, out of their releases over the years because I know the black stuff is going to wear off. Um, well, it, no, it, it's ceramic cased. Ceramic yeah, case. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, so nothing's coming off. That's that's. Oh, it's yeah. not the. Uh, yeah, oh, it's shit. not coated. Yeah. It's, oh it's wow! A it's not the case. PVD coated. Right, oh right. shit! I like that now. So that won't come off. Nope. That's the color of the case. Is that all the way through? Yep, and highly scratch resistant. Wow! Now I like it. You know what I mean? What a beautiful watch. Look at the movement. Oh man, the look of it is crazy, man. With the yellow hands. Omega is really, really killing it, man. Last year they did the three vintage ones in a right. box that you could get, you know. Uh, I'm not sure of the pricing on this, but it's pretty damn cool. And then they did this one, the Seamaster Diver, which uh, it's not for me. The face is kind of funky, the wavy face, but some people are going to love it. Yeah, It's got the weird open hands and everything, you know. So, you know, Basil World, all this stuff is out there, and... Um, 
It's uh, you can cover it a lot. Of course, you can go to Instagram and just follow the hashtag Basil World right, right. 2018 and lose your mind. Yeah. Or you can just go to Hodinky. And uh, if you're thinking about getting any watches, you ever have any questions, you need a watch restored or anything, uh, go see my man, Bo. This guy's work is next level. Thank you, sir. Uh, you guys have been busy up there, huh? Very busy. Very what, busy. What are you, uh, just nonstop? Like, I yeah. mean. Just working on the world's most important watches. Yeah. You what, know? what do you got in there right now with, that would be the craziest? I mean, our primary focus is always vintage. Right. Uh, vintage restoration. We do work for a lot of private collectors, a lot of dealers and uh, a few of the auction houses as well. Um, I mean, at any given time, we've got a Newman or two. Yeah. Um, a lot of vintage sports stuff, subs. I saw a watch. Uh, let me see if I screenshot it. That's going up for auction that I can't even believe existed. I had never seen it. And I, shit, I don't think I grabbed it. What was it? It was. It, it's, it's, it, I saw it today, and I've, I don't know why I didn't screenshot it. It's a rare sub with no numbers or anything. It, it was a it's prototype. At Phillips, I think. Yeah, exactly. And it's called like the uh, the mono sub or something. It had no numbers. Yeah, or no any- luminous. Wow. It, no numbers, nothing. No yeah. markers. Nothing. It was a prototype. I tell you, if Rolex made that, people's heads would pop off. The prototype dial, I mean, there's 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 been some crazy stuff. Rolex had a lot of anomalies, yeah. you know, in time since past. But there's also a lot of speculation about what was what and what was real and what wasn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, as we talk all the time and we see these prices of these uh, Daytonas and everything going crazy through the roof, uh, don't ever let watches fear you. We've just gone through all kinds of stuff. You can get, I mean, I've seen some G shocks that I absolutely love. Oh, yeah. you, you can know? get, you can get a great watch for, you know, a relatively reasonable price point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, your Instagram real quick is at LA watchworks, uh, Los Angeles uh, we're local in Pasadena. So come see us. Also, if you do have any watch, uh, questions, you want to go see my boy, Andy, at St. Cross Jeweler in Koreatown. They, they are a Rolex authorized dealer and I highly recommend them. And uh, go see Andy. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going to be in there, but they always do have a great collection of stuff. Um, but, you know, they're, they're an AD for Rolex. And yeah. what other brands do they carry? They've got Panerai, okay. Breitling, and someone else, uh, something else in there. I can't remember. But they're m- all Rolex, pretty much. And then nice. they got a case of Panerai. And I would still tell everyone to this day, and I truly believe this, I think the greatest Rolex uh, of all time for just straight up, entry level, uh, lifetime Rolex. And people ask me this over and over, what would you get? It would be the new Explorer 1. Uh, it's 39 millimeter, the long hand new one. I think it's the greatest understated smoking sport steel watch ever made. So that's my choice. Um, and you're still at the, uh, just sub, right? Yep. No yep. date sub steel submariner. There you go. You know, preferably no date for me, but date yeah. subs good too. Thank you for yeah. tuning in everybody. Thanks guys. And, um, subscribe to the podcast. Also YouTube channel. And keep the candles lit, and I love you guys. See ya. See ya.